Hey everyone and good morning from Long Beach, California, where today I'm here at Aquarium of the Pacific, an aquarium I have never been to before, but I've heard good things about. This video is going to show you all the animals and exhibits that can be found here. Let's go check things out. And I made it inside the aquarium. It was about $37 to get in. A pretty big lobby. As you come into the aquarium, you are greeted with a, an enclosure for the shallow water coral reef. In the lobby area, there's a very, very large enclosure you could see here called the Blue Cavern. The size of that guy there. And I figured that, hey, we're in Southern California, might as well start out the aquarium in the Southern California section. All right, probably should have started somewhere else. This area is under construction, so it's just kind of this one enclosure here, which is still neat, but not, not, not a wow. Kind of neat when you're on the second floor, you get a different view of the massive blue cavern enclosure, which is good to see as well, because then you, normally with stuff like this, different animals kind of live on different levels or like to hang out on different levels. Looks like there's some playground equipment for kids and a shark lagoon. Uh, it's a pretty cool touch tank for uh, various rays and there's a shark species here as well. I love the blue spotted ray and its colors. Yeah. It's another touch tank area, home to some smaller shark species. And it looks like they're all kind of laying on top of each other right here. There's epaulette sharks and bamboo sharks. It's a viewing area for sharks as well. These are much larger sharks. Sharks you cannot touch. Look at the size of the ray. Wow. Underwater viewing as well for the big because shark. Because the rays tank. don't have natural buoyancy, so they hang out. The next exhibit in the outdoor area is for the California steelhead. And that is a species of fish I am not too familiar with. And what I'm assuming is one of the larger exhibits here, you've got seals and sea lions. Oh, it looks like it's currently a training session going on, so it's kind of fun to walk into. You can see the seal in the back over there. And the sea lines up front. There's a really cool underwater viewing area for the seals and sea lions. I actually missed this on my first walk through the aquarium. I don't like how their tails look like they have. Up next, the northern Pacific. The first enclosure is for rockfish. And you can see them moving and, and swaying with the currents. I uh, just got off the cruise ship this morning, and last night, that felt like me. It was uh, huh, a lot of movement on that ship. So I, I feel you, rockfish. There's also a second one of these surge channel tanks. See them just swaying back and forth and back and forth. Fun enclosure here for puffins and other seabirds. This guy just posing for us. See what swimming as well. There's a section for jellyfish. Smaller species of jellyfish is the warty comb jelly. And this is fascinating because it looks like there's almost like multicolored electricity running through them. This much larger species is the moon jelly. And here we have the lion's mane jellyfish. They have quite a few West Coast sea nettles. This is an itty bitty species, the umbrella jelly. This enclosure is for uh, an animal I really enjoy seeing at aquariums, but I can't seem to find it. The giant Pacific octopus is supposed to be in here. I, I don't see the octopus. There's a lot of sea stars, but I don't see the octopus. A little bit later, and the giant Pacific octopus is now out in the enclosure. Not doing a whole lot, but at least got to see it. There's a touch tank for sea stars. 
a very, very large enclosure here. And there's lots of fish, but then there's also some sea otters. I love sea otters. doing the otter thing. He's using his tummy as a table. This enclosure is called Rocky Reef. Oh. A lot of smaller fish in this one. Looks like it's done up as uh, what would live underneath a pier. Design on this one, you kind of look over all the fish. I'm shaking. There's a round enclosure home to lots and lots of prawns. Also in here with the prawns is a spiny king crab. Enclosure here, they're cleaning the grass for the squat lobster. Here's one I'm not too familiar with. This is a grunt, grunt sculpin. I really like this species. These are the giant Japanese spider crabs. And they have quite a few. Next up, the Tropical Pacific. The first enclosure very much lives up to the name as you were coming in. It is a big coral lagoon. Very bright and vibrant. Another really nice sized enclosure. This one's home to the aquarium's oldest living corals. Interesting looking fish. He's floating away. And something that uh, every aquarium kind of has to do. The old Finding Nemo tank. It's a very, very well designed exhibit here. You've got animals on both sides of you. I believe this enclosure is currently getting cleaned. So there's this big vacuum kind of pipe. A couple of seahorses. It took me about 30 seconds before I realized that this is actually a fish. The weedy scorpion fish. There's also a twin spot lionfish over there. And kind of directly down, those are shrimp fish. The big enclosure with the walk-through tunnel area also has this kind of tube you walk into. It's very bright in here. These are lagoon jellies. Another enclosure with great lighting. Remember the aquarium staff and they're cleaning up the glowing reef tank. Very much looks like something out of Avatar. This enclosure is for a coral that you would find in the deepest parts of the reef. A big tropical reef. Next up, the Pacific Visions Wing. It's zebra sharks. And it looks like the fish have just got fed. As there's a frenzy up top. There is a smaller zebra shark. Also in here with a blue spotted ray. 
There is a lot of technology in this exhibit. Big giant interactive wall. Looks like there's a film section, a 11 minute film about corals in six minutes. The Pacific Visions Theater is really, really cool. Uh, it's got a big kind of wraparound screen and then one on the floor and it projects stuff onto both of them. Uh, very, very neat technology in here. There are also a lot of smaller enclosures in this area with a variety of fish species. With our staff, our animal husbandry staff takes great pride in helping our babies grow and And a lot of these guys are going to be baby fish. This is the snack bar in the lobby is a, an enclosure for fish of the northern Pacific. There's an interesting show the right off the lobby on a, uh, a 360 dome. Marking the largest migration of humans. Uh, there's a moon jelly touch thing and also an enclosure for archer fish. Archer fish are really unique because they get uh, spit water out of their mouths, as you can see in this picture there. It's neat, they do have an animal care center where if they're doing any procedures on the animals, you could come and watch through the windows. Right now, I'm what they are calling the holding system. Uh, new animals are placed in the holding system to be, uh, make sure they're healthy and, and parasite free before they are introduced to other animals in the aquarium. It's kind of neat. A pretty big place too. The size of that guy. There's another ray touch tank. This guy doesn't splash me. Uh, better look at some of the rays in the glass. This bird here is a yellow crowned night heron. Not the easiest to see through the fence, but you do have a couple different species of birds in here. I really like this guy and his little tiny legs. Next, I'll head into the Gulf of California, see if Cortez is of it. Very well lit tank in here. A couple different species of fish, but mostly for the garden eels, which you can see, they all kind of come in and out of their holes at the same time. I guess as that one uh, pufferfish kind of guy came over, they all ducked. Cool. Let me zoom in on them. Big old pufferfish here. <laughs> is one of the stars of this rocky reef tank. Look at that guy. This is a small area for frogs. It took me a while to find the mossy frog, but eventually I did. It's over on the wall. That little guy there, that is a dark frog. In a fun pose there is the Panamanian golden frog. Not a frog, but this is the aquatic Sicilian. Very snake-like. Very snake-like indeed. Here's a treat, the hellbender is moving around. A species that you don't get to see move all that much, and it might be done. I hear that looks like a very, very relaxed frog. Very cool dark frog. Got a couple different newts in here. I like newts. The Sonoran Desert Toad. Oh, it's like Jabba the Hutt. Unfortunately for my visit, some of the bird enclosures will be closed as the avian flu has been found in Los Angeles County. That's smart, you gotta take care of the animals. Another uh, victim of the avian flu, the penguins are off exhibit. 
Uh, the penguins are, of course, my favorite animal, so this one hurts, but smart to keep the birds safe. They have penguins from South America here. Another theater presentation. I think this one might be a 3D movie that shows a couple different films, but right now it's closed for a private program and not reopening until I'll be leaving the aquarium. No surprise, there is a very large gift shop. It's my time here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. It's about $37 to get into. I was here for about two and a half hours. Um, for me, the highlight, I definitely like the sea otter area and seeing those little guys that were so cute. Um, I thought the, it was interesting how they had indoor and outdoor sections of the aquariums. Not a ton of aquariums do that. Also, I like the coral reef section. And uh, their theater presentations were very impressive, uh, especially the, the newer one with the, the wraparound screen and the screen on the floor. That was a really cool show. All right, guys, if you have any questions about the Aquarium of the Pacific, let me know in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.